now that we've seen how to read the data incorrectly, let's also spend a little bit of time looking at the log file and the list file. So remember the log file is essentially where SAS gives you a status of command submitted. It tells you what happens when you submit a command and whether the processing has been done accurately. And the LST file is where the output of SAS is generated. So what we have done so far is we've used the program editor window to write uh, code to input data. Now we'll take a look at what happens when you submit that, that code in the log file and in the LST file or the output file. So let's say this is our code, similar to what we had seen, data get data. Um, notice that I've uh, changed the file location here, but it's, uh, it's the same file, uh, just a copy saved in another file location. So I'm going to run this code, okay, and then take a look at the log. Now the log is in the output explorer. So if you go to the output explorer window, you can see there is a log file and there's an HTML file. The default output for this session has been set as HTML. You can also set it, set it as text. In SAS, you can set default output as text or HTML. But HTML is much better because the formatting is much better in HTML. So the readability is much better. But let's first take a look at the log. So you can see that there's a lot of stuff that's been printed. So you can see here it says, uh, you know, some licensing information. And then this is the actual code that we submitted, data get data one, in file, etc. And then SAS has given us uh, some notes. 19 records were read from this file. The minimum record length was 20. The maximum record length was 31. Data set work dot get data one has 19 observations and six variables. The data step took this many seconds, real time and CPU time. So we'll talk about what, why has this data set name changed to work.getData1. We had only specified getData1, uh, but we will talk about that very shortly when we talk about temporary data sets and permanent data sets. But you can see that essentially, you, you know, when you submit the code, there doesn't seem to be any problem. SAS has, has, has confirmed that 19 records were read from this file and there were six variables that were read from this file. Then we listed a command for print, proc print. So then SAS says 19 observations were read from this data file, procedure print step took this many seconds, right? So this is the log. So this is just telling you status of command submitted. If you would had any issues with your SAS syntax, so for example, let's say that I forgot to include the semicolon. Remember I told you that every SAS line has to end with a semicolon. Supposing for, you know, by mistake you sort of forgot to include the semicolon. Now, in the editor window, when you don't include the semicolon, right away, the SAS keyword has used to be in blue and now has become black. So one way for you to figure out that you're making syntax errors in SAS is that SAS will alert you because the editor window is uh, user-friendly color coding, does provide user-friendly color coding. So if I had correctly included a semicolon, then all these SAS keywords in the next line, in file, DLM, DSD, misover, will all show up in blue. If I had excluded the semicolon by mistake, you notice that this in file has now become black. Now, as you're typing in SAS code, sometimes this is one way for you to figure out that you made an error. But let's say that you didn't notice and you wanted to run this code. And this is a syntax error. This will generate a syntax error. So let me, so if you run this code now and look at the log, you can see that SAS is not very happy. 